Once locked away as a Japanese Super Famicom exclusive, Live Alive is finally available in English-speaking territories nearly 30 years after its original release. Now, has this RPG been worth the wait? And more importantly, is it worth dropping your cold hard cash on? Well, in this review, we take a look at the Switch version of the game, a brief look at the Super Famicom version of the game, and a whole lot more. Let's get to it. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Today though, we're digging into some Live Alive for the Nintendo Switch. Now as opposed to a JRPG with an expansive story focusing on one character or set of characters, Live Alive revolves around a handful of different stories and settings here. Now these vary in length, but by and large these can be completed usually within a couple of hours each. Now for my first playthrough, the shortest completion I had for one of these uh, chapters was about an hour, while the longest was maybe like five or six or something like that. Now each of the eight stories here offer something completely different when it comes to settings. Uh, if you're from Edo era Japan to the Old West, the future and more, I think there are really some unique areas to play through here. Now while I did enjoy the short stories for each chapter, the final chapter had a bit of a slow start, I think. I, I spent quite a bit of time just grinding levels for my characters to get strong enough to complete uh, some of the endgame stuff. I won't go into specifics here, but I'm talking like, you know, optional dungeons, final boss, stuff like that. I mean, in the end, I was still satisfied with this overall experience, but I did find it a bit annoying while going through it. And, you know, I do have a few more thoughts that I put down in my written review uh, that might have some slight spoilers. So if you, I didn't want to include that here in this video because there's really no way to, you know, as a viewer, to avoid that type of thing if you don't see it coming. So I, I don't get super specific there with the story beats or anything like that, but if you want to listen to more or read more about what I think, uh, take a look at Famicast.com. We have a link to the review in the description box below. Live Alive is a turn-based strategy RPG at heart. Now, while that might turn some people off, I think it's pretty quick pace and more akin to traditional turn-based RPGs than standard uh, strategy RPGs that might come to mind. Uh, you know, that might take a little bit more time or something like that. This is pretty snappy. I think each chapter and the characters here offer unique abilities for your characters, which is pretty fresh. Now, on-screen indicators here also show what kind of actions are effective or less potent against your enemies. Now, the addition of this gameplay element requires you to actually kind of think about the most effective ways to take out your opponents. I mean, spamming attacks is still fine here, but you definitely need to find the most efficient way to go about battling. Now, additionally, some of the enemies don't have any of these elemental weaknesses or something like that, leaving you to kind of figure out how to best them on your own. Overall here, I think this system feels pretty great. I like the speed of the gameplay and just the overall battles. This is a lot of fun to play. For a majority of the game, there are no random encounters. Battles are initiated by simply coming up to on-screen enemies and, you know, basically running into them. This has changed up a bit in the end game as some random encounters are introduced here. While I don't mind the change too much, I did find that I had to make adjustments to how I play the game because of that. And before, I was able to kind of take my time exploring without much risk. This wasn't as easy to do with the random battles. I mean, it's it's not a hard knock against the game or anything, but it does change up how you have to tackle these areas. And thankfully, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, saving is possible pretty much anywhere outside of battle, so you could kind of, you know, back yourself up that way. Now, compared to the original release, which we'll talk about more in just a little bit, Live Alive has seen quite a nice facelift with the HD 2D elements. Character sprites are large, animate well, and they're pretty expressive. The environments themselves are oftentimes in 3D, which contrasts nicely to the sprite work here. Now, while the game runs pretty smoothly most of the time, I did notice a few times where the frame rate would dip. I experienced this, as far as I can remember, only in the Twilight of Edo chapter, but I can't really recall it happening elsewhere. Now, Live Alive also features extensive voice work in both Japanese and English. I, I think the solid scripts here are delivered nicely and with some pretty good voice acting, and you can really feel the story beats here too. Uh, the music is also a high point with several memorable tracks that will definitely stick with you well after you put the controller down. As many of you out there are well aware, Live Alive has come a long way from its original 1994 Super Famicom release in a number of aspects. Now, just for the record, the game actually did see a re-release thanks to the Virtual Console service here in Japan. It hit the Wii U Virtual Console on June 24th, 2015, and was followed by a 3DS Virtual Console release on November 28th, 2016. Now, though this Switch version has been my introduction to the game, I did pick up the 3DS Virtual Console release just to kind of see how it stacks up against to what is on offer here. Now, obviously the story beats here are the same, but there are quite a few improvements that have helped bring Live Alive into the modern era of gaming. If you look at the Switch version compared to the Super Famicom version, like side by side. Now, of course, the visuals here are the most noticeable difference. 
Uh, you know, obviously being originally released in 1994, the sprite work was quite simple and had a, quite a few similarities uh, visually with the earlier Final Fantasy titles on the platform. And this makes total sense because the you know, scenario writer, director, and producer of the remake, Takashi Tokita, did work on the Final Fantasy series before the original Live Alive. Now, other than that, I think some other noticeable things here too. The battle grid is a little bit more grid-like, if you will, and the helpful indicators showing enemy weaknesses and stuff like that, I, as far as I know, that's not really shown. Now, to put it simply, I think Live Alive has a lot of Final Fantasy IV vibes here. I think the biggest, most obvious difference from that is obviously the variety of stories, characters, and locations. Also, you know, given the time that it would have taken to localize this game and release it in the West, I could kind of see why Square opted to leave this game on Japanese shores. You know, thinking about a realistic release window for a Western uh, release of the game, Live Alive would have been up against some pretty stiff competition, because it probably would have been, you know, what, 95, maybe even into 1996 by the time they got it done. and. Yeah, I, and just looking at the visuals, I think gamers might have been a little bit disappointed because it just would kind of pale in comparison with other things that would be available at that time. Now, in an age where people were getting a little crazy with visuals, you know, the PlayStation was out, you know, on the market or near coming out, and Nintendo 64 was on the horizon, Square just kind of decided to let the game die in Japan until now. Now, I really didn't know what to expect going into Live Alive, but I can say that I really enjoyed my time with it. The visuals and sound are great, and the gameplay is fun and pretty easy to understand. The segmented stories work well, and they give you a clear start and end point, and don't take too much of your time. I think some of the chapters can get a little bit long in the tooth or feel a little bit grindy, but I think these bite-sized stories are a fun way to get into like different narratives that even if you don't have time to invest dozens and dozens of hours to see some kind of payoff. I think if you're an RPG fan that's looking for several light, good stories with a satisfying overall art, you're going to need to try out Live Alive. But let's turn things over to you guys. Did you pick up Live Alive on the Switch? What do you think of it? What is your favorite chapter in the game? Now, for me personally, I really love the Distant, Fu the Distant Future chapter with Tube, yeah, and also the Wild West chapters. Now, for you guys, be sure to sign up in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks at Japanese games like this, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.